on your Monday morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Hope you got off the couch and got outside to enjoy the weather that we Do had this fall weekend. Things. Do you fall were talking, things. It, it finally felt like fall. Yeah, you Not walked around, warm. maybe a light sweater if you needed one. It was it was nice. Yeah, hot, hot heat coming back though, John. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know what to do. The Vikings weren't playing, so it's like, I'm like, well, I have all this free time. What do I do? <laughs> um, went to my daughter's soccer practice for the first time in my life. No, I'm just kidding. I'm always there. 52, 51 this morning, kids at the bus stop. Dress accordingly, and we're going to warm things up by the uh, late late morning already. So quick warming. I don't. It's a borderline uh, summer-like clothing option here. It will be definitely summer-like clothes once you get past today. Crystal looking a little better here. I was seeing some dense fog towards Maple Grove. Looks like that's shifting now. One, one spot would be Burnsville South on 35. Just get ready to hit the brakes there. 55 right now in the Twin Cities, 47 in St. Cloud, 50 in Mankato. Rochester waking up in the 40s. Pockets of 40s, low 50s. Here's what today looks like. Fabulous day. Like I said, a cool start, but you're going to have to shed the layers. If you have layers, we'll get to the 70s or middle 70s by this afternoon and a little breezy with increasing clouds. Megan. All right, let's take a look at some drive times right now between the Twin Cities looking really good this morning. About a seven minute commute on 94 both directions between Minneapolis and St. Paul and St. Paul to Minneapolis across the metro right now. We've got a couple little minor situations, but nothing major to report this morning. If you want to take a look at your drive into work, Jason and Jen, good morning. Good morning, Megan, and thank you very much. Turning now to our top story here at 6 a.m. A Minnetonka family is making uh, taking a stand against crime tonight and wants the community's help. Yeah, this after they were violently carjacked in their own driveway. There's video of the whole thing. Here it is. You can see it happen. This was about a month ago, and now the family says it's time for state and city leaders to hear their story. CC is at Minnetonka City Hall, where the family will be speaking tonight. CC. Hi, good morning, guys. So that meeting is at 630 tonight, and the family is really encouraging residents to come on out and share their concerns, too, hoping that it'll get a statement to the Hennepin County Attorney's Office and then also other elected officials. Let's take time to take another look at that video that you see, that you just saw on your uh, TV there. So according to a complaint on August 17th, Craig Beeson's wife and 13 year old son, they came back home from grocery shopping only to get assaulted and carjacked by four men. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office charged 21 year old Ramel Lewis last week with first degree carjacking as well as robbery and burglary. Police say he's wanted in a series of metro area burglaries and car thefts, and right now there's a warrant out for his arrest. Now, this is the first case in the county making use of a new state law that calls for more serious charges for violent offenders and carjackings. Uh, it's extremely frustrating. Yeah, it's extremely frustrating to see that it went this long before charges are even brought forth, and now only one of four has been brought forth. The city of Minnetonka tells us that this is the first carjacking of 2023 and that carjackings are pretty rare in the city. Guys. All right, Cece, thank you very much. And Minnetonka police are addressing car thefts in the city. Heidi Wigdahl shows us their new plan of attack and the numbers showing why it's needed. So far in 2023, 49 vehicles have been stolen. In all of 2022, there were 76. Police say in a majority of the thefts from this year, the key fobs were either inside the car or nearby. The department recently received a multi-year state grant to tackle the issue. We have more information on ways they're addressing the problem at care11.com. New information in the last 48 hours about a break in a 23 year old Minnesota cold case, and it's all thanks to genetic genealogy. According to the New Brighton Department of Public Safety, a body was found in Long Lake Regional Park back in the year 2000. At the time, the BCA collected her DNA but didn't connect it to any missing person reports. But recently here, investigators were able to use a public records request to make a connection to a woman named Gail Johnson. A DNA sample from one of Johnson's family members confirmed that connection. In two days, a funeral will be held for a fallen police officer in Iowa. Algona officer Kevin Cram died last Wednesday when police say a man shot him as he was trying to serve an arrest warrant. Just 16 hours ago, hundreds of people gathered to remember him at a vigil. And right now, a memorial is growing as his squad, covered in flowers, sits outside the city's police station. Algona has been and will always continue to be a close-knit community. We will survive this tragic moment. We will lean on each other to get through each day. 
Cram's funeral will be held Wednesday morning at 1030 at the Algona High School gym. A public visitation will be held tomorrow evening at the school's Performing Arts Center. In the next two and a half hours, students at two Adina schools will be back in class today with extra security. The school switched to remote learning on Friday after a teenager posted a video with a gun in the parking lot at Adina High School. This morning, there will be increased patrols at the high school and Valley View Middle School as well. Police are also increasing their presence at the nearby elementary school. If kids or other uh, suspects show up on school property with firearms or with handguns with the intention of doing harm, they're going to expect a heavy law enforcement presence. Now that was the chief of the Edina Police Department. The department has police arrested a 17-year-old in Minneapolis for last week's threat. They say he is not a current or former student at Edina, and it's not clear why he went to the school. He can now face two felony charges, including threats of violence and carrying a firearm on school property. It's day four of the United Auto Workers strike against the big three automakers. In the next few hours, the union is expected to meet with Ford and GM. The union says it wants the companies to restore benefits and pay that their workers had before they took cuts. The impacts of the strike are already being felt across the industry. Ford and General Motors say that they're laying off 2,600 workers due to the work stoppages. And this morning we have an update on a possible strike at the Hormel plant in Austin, Minnesota. Union workers at the plant are now back at work despite rejecting a final contract offer from the company on Thursday. We're working to find out the details of that offer, but we do know that the two sides agreed to a contract extent extension until October 8th as the negotiations continue. 607 on the clock and in about two hours, Walgreens will start offering the new updated COVID booster shot. CVS says some of its pharmacies already have it. They expect it to arrive at their other locations in the next few days. The new vaccine is available for those six months and older. And as COVID cases rise here, doctors urge people to not only get this updated vaccine, but also to take the extra precautions like sanitizing your workspace and staying home if you feel sick. And as we see an uptick in COVID cases, the Minnesota Department of Health is once again offering free rapid at-home tests. You can get eight tests per household once a month. We have the link to order over at care11.com. For the first time in 15 years, Norway's sitting prime minister is visiting the Twin Cities. In a matter of hours, Jonas Garstora will speak at St. Olaf. He'll then visit Camp Ripley for the 50th anniversary of the Minnesota National Guard Norwegian Troop Exchange. He's already had a busy 24 hours visiting the Norway House in Minneapolis to talk about Norwegian-American relations.